everybody, how's it going? It's Douglas here at Drumway Productions, and welcome to the Scream 2 Movie Mask Guide. So first things first, if you guys haven't already seen the Scream 1 Movie Mask Guide, I recommend you go check that out on my channel. But let's go ahead and get right into this. So today I'm going to be going over the different mask types that were used in Scream 2 and showing you how to identify those masks, as well as teaching you a little bit of history about the very specific masks that were used in the production. So let's start by clearing up a misconception. Most people would label the Scream 2 style mask as this which is a Fearsome Faces mask. For years and years, it's been believed that a standard Fearsome Faces mask with a poly shroud is exactly what was used in Scream 2. However, due to recent information, we know that that is not the case. While the mask itself, and I do mean specifically just the mask itself, was the same style used, it's not exactly the same as these, because the masks used in production weren't standard Fearsome Faces masks with poly shrouds. They were actually Fearsome Faces masks with cotton shrouds. However, that's not the only difference in them, so let's talk about that. During the production of Scream 1, as we've already covered, they used the Generation 1 Fantastic Faces, or at least at the time it was the only Weeping Ghost Fantastic Faces. Well, during Scream's production, Fun World foresaw the popularity of Ghostface as a character, and there had been a few issues with their Generation 1 mold, so they had their sculptors overseas try to copy that mask as close as they could, as close as they could possibly get it. And what they came up with was this, which of course we all know now as the Generation 2 Fantastic Faces. And while it actually is pretty impressively pretty close to the Generation 1, there's definitely a few differences that's very, very noticeable amongst collectors. Due to the present timeline, we know that these were produced during the time period in which Scream 1 was still in production. Ultimately, however, they weren't used in the film. They may have been on set, though it's hard to say. And after Scream's release and the jolt in popularity for the Fun World masks, they started producing a new line, which was no longer called the Fantastic Faces, but the more aptly named, eerily named, Fearsome Faces. And those masks consisted of essentially the very same sculpt, but a much deeper production mold. And this is what we ended up with. Of course, these were produced with a much cheaper, as well, poly shroud instead of a cotton shroud. And for the past 20 some odd years, it has been assumed that amongst Scream fans and collectors that this mask, the standard Polly Shroud Fearsome Faces, is the mask that was used mainly in Scream 2. However, that's not quite the case. Due to information that we've gained from longtime collectors, as well as people that worked in the production, as well as people that worked at Fun World, we learned about a new run of masks known as the Scream 2 production masks. And these are technically still Fearsome Faces. These masks would have been produced and released on a Fearsome Faces style tag. Fun World contacted their factory overseas and had them produce a special run of masks for the production of Scream 2, and 500 pieces were made. Those pieces were these. Essentially just a Fearsome Faces mold style mask with a cotton shroud instead of a thin, flimsy poly shroud. But there are a few more unique things about this run, like specifically the PVC vinyl mix. In these, instead of being a more rigid, solid vinyl, they were made to be very thin and flimsy, very, very soft vinyl. And in fact, this is so thin, I don't know if it comes through well on camera, but you can see my fingers through the forehead of the mask. It's very, very noticeable in person. Maybe not super noticeable on camera, I'll know after I watch it back. However, something about this special mix of PVC vinyl has caused a few issues over time. Number one being the slight yellow marks or some yellowing stains that you can actually see present on the masks in the film that over time have turned like more brown. And that's present on pretty much all of these masks, including this one. You can really see it around the bubbles of the eyes here and a few spots on the cheeks and even on the sides of the mouth. It's pretty noticeable. And in fact, I wasn't super fond of this mask in particular because I thought it had something wrong with it until I learned this information. Now, out of the 500 masks that were produced for production, 200 were sent to set, the other 300 were sent to retail, and all the masks that were sent to retail were tagged, like I said, as Fearsome Faces masks and sold. So without knowing it, you might actually have one of these masks in your collection yourself. And like I said, the main identifying factors would be that thin, floppy vinyl, a cotton shroud being present, and the deeper production style mold, which is this. Very, very noticeably, you can see right here and right here, some mold scarring, some lines that are showing through. They're actually pretty noticeable in the theater scene where you can see a good side shot of the killer 
there with Maureen, you can see the very same mold scars on screen. So for those of you at home, be sure to check your masks, and if you happen to have one of these and everything checks out, let me know in the comment section down below, and congratulations! Owning one of these is probably as close as you're going to get to having a screen-used mask, except for, well, maybe one of the Scream 4 production-style masks, but that's a different video. Now that we've got that information out of the way, we can get to the main masks that were used in Scream 2. Of course, the main mask that would be present would be the Generation 2 style mask, which would be one of these. This is what the killer uses for a majority of the film. The Hero Mask number 1 and Hero Mask number 2 are both this very same style mask. And these are also present all throughout the stab theater scene, all throughout it. Tons and tons of these. Now let's get to the second style of mask that was used in Scream 2, which would be the Easter Unlimited MK Stamp, also known as the RDS. Even though this mask has gained the name the RDS, also known as the Randy Death Scene, it has been seen in quite a few other scenes other than just Randy's death scene. For instance, it's actually, I think, the first mask we technically see on screen. The very first shot where Phil and Maureen step into the stab theater, you can see one of these hanging in between two of the stab posters in the lobby. In fact, there's tons of masks littered all throughout the theater scene. Mostly, like I said, the Generation 2 and the RDS mask. However, there are quite a few of these present in that scene, not just in the theater, but in the lobby as well. I think the main reason for this mask being used is that it was the other mask type that was being produced during the same time period. So people have always asked me, Douglas, what do the stamps mean? I see N stamp, T stamp, MK stamp, what do those mean? And honestly, it's kind of interesting, but not super interesting. Essentially, it just represents which factory produced said mask. Now, the one reason that the stamps are very important is because the interesting part about Fun World pieces is each and every factory overseas produces their own sculpt for Ghostface. Or at least at the time they did. They tried to re-sculpt the pre-existing mask or pre-existing mold they already had there. So, for instance, the MK. This would have been the first style mask produced by that factory. However, since then, there have been three more, leaving us with four MK style masks. And while they're not all the same, all the different MK mold variants do happen to feature a very distinct squinty eye. And to be honest, the RDS is one of the most misidentified masks out there due to all those MK stamps. There are also a few different mask variants that look very close to this but are not the very same exact thing. Some ways that you can easily identify an RDS are the very, very round nose here. Look at how round that is. Not very pointy like some of the older Ghostface styles. And also, look at the eyes, how small and squinty they are. Also, how far apart they are, or at least they seem that far apart, right here in between the eyes. And if you look at the mouth, instead of going almost straight down, it almost has like this little pinch in, little squeeze in, right about here. Look at that style, and you can compare all these different things, and you can tell if you have an RDS mask or not. However, due to just a few shots where you can see Miss Loomis wearing this thing while she guts poor Randy, it has become known as the Randy Death Scene Mask. So there you guys have it. That's pretty much it. The main two mask types that were used in Scream 2 would have been the Cotton Shroud Generation 2, Fearsome Faces, and the Cotton Shroud Randy Death Scene, or RDS, MK Stamp Mask. So I think that about covers it. I want to say a quick thank you to everybody for checking out the video, and I also want to give a quick shout out to Ryan Hills and John Lewis for putting together the Scream 2 Mask Guide. So if you would like to see a scene-by-scene -scene breakdown of legitimately every single moment where there's a mask present in these films, please go check out Scream Trilogy and Screaming Ghostface Collectors. The full movie guides are present on both, and I'll be sure to put a link to both of those places down below. I love you all, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.